Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. So this is going to be a part two to the packing video that I posted about four months ago. This video has like, not like, okay, it's like blown up for me. Like in the past like a week or like two weeks or so, which is just, it's very exciting. So I figured that I should do a part two because people have like literally been asking for it, which is not a sentence I say often. If you wanna subscribe, that'd be cool. Yeah, so I have been living in Scotland for three months and this video is going to be like a follow-up. If you wanna know exactly what I packed, not, that hasn't changed. Like all of my stuff is still over there. And what I will say is the basics of that video still really hold up. However, if you're looking for like some more nuanced tips and tricks stay for this video because I have learned some things, okay? In that video, basically what I did is I created a capsule wardrobe and I explain it like further in detail. You can like see everything that I packed. And what I will say is this worked out so well. Now that I have lived in, lived in Edinburgh for a little while, I brought too many shoes. So, and everyone told me this, they were like, just bring like four pairs of shoes. Like you don't need it. And I wish that I had listened. <laughs> The shoes that I brought to Edinburgh were hiking boots, waterproof, like Steve Madden boots, running shoes, Adidas sneakers for like actual like walking around. And then I brought my penny loafers, which I swiftly brought home because I had no use for them. The thing about Edinburgh is like you literally walk everywhere. If you are like me and you have like some fun shoes that you're thinking like, oh, like I could, you know, potentially wear these to a party or something, don't bring them. Everybody in Edinburgh has the same pair of Doc Martin boots. And I'm not saying you should be like everybody else. However, everybody wears a Doc Martin style waterproof boot everywhere because it's just functional. I had, I don't have Doc Martens, but I had this pair of like Steve Madden black boots that I have literally, I've probably had them for like eight years at this point. I got them when I was like a sophomore in high school. I was 16, oh my God, how old was I? Oh my God, was that eight years ago? I'm literally so old, that's terrifying. But yeah, so I definitely recommend a waterproof boot and that is just gonna be your dressing up shoe. So if you're like a person who likes to get really dressed stuff, like I totally, I see you, I feel you, I hear you. However, the amount of walking that you do, and if you're only going for a couple months, I really just recommend bringing that one shoe and just sort of like trying to like pair some things that you know you can kind of like dress it up with and dress it down. Unless you're going to like a, like a fancy dinner, which like I actually wore my boots to a fancy dinner um, and I was underdressed. However, I just boldly made the choice to be underdressed because I also didn't have an actual dress to wear to it. But I did bring like a little like plaid dress and I got some tights, so it like kind of worked out. These are the shoes that I would recommend that you bring. I personally, I brought my hiking boots because I knew that we would be going, I knew that I personally wanted to go into the Highlands and like, I'm hoping to go more into the Highlands this um, coming semester. And hiking boots are just a good thing for that because it's raining and like the amount of mud that got caked on my shoes from that day, like it's actually just, it's crazy. So waterproof boots, which I mentioned before. I personally brought running shoes, sneakers, because I like to go to the gym. And yeah, I, I think maybe if I was going for, no, I think I would have still brought my sneakers. But yeah, if you're not a gym person and you know that you're not gonna bring them, like need them, don't bring them. Like just just don't be like, oh, like when I get there, like no, when you get there, if you're only there for like three, four months, you're just wanna, gonna wanna go and like live your truth and just, like be honest with yourself. So if you wanna like swap out, if you're like more of like a going out person, swap out your sneakers for like a pair of like fun going out shoes. So just like knowing your own personality, I think is gonna be key when you're packing your suitcase. And if you like both, I would say maybe just borrow some fun going out shoes when you're there, because that's also an option. Just like make some friends who have cute shoes. Yeah, so I brought my penny lovers home. So now I only have four pairs of shoes in Edinburgh and like that is more than enough. Yeah. It's, it's really fine. Okay, so number two thing is I didn't include my rain jacket in that video. And I talked about my rain jacket later because I had actually like, I had ordered one to be brought to Edinburgh, but then it never showed up in time. But I got my rain jacket from this brand called Fat Face. It is the best jacket in the whole world. Like I would recommend it to everybody. I don't know the exact fit and style, but I will link it down below or I will link like a similar jacket below. And the number one tip that I'm gonna give you about your rain jacket is look for a waterproof jacket. I didn't really know the difference between a water resistant jacket versus like a waterproof jacket. I think you want a waterproof. Whatever is the stronger one, you want that one. And this was such an awesome purchase. So another mistake that I made, 
which I can't personally undo. I'm just gonna have to live with the consequences. But I brought a leather backpack to Edinburgh, which I'm probably ruining it because it gets rained on all the time. And I'm actually surprised that like my computer still works. I have just really timed it correctly. So this is what I'm going to tell you. So you either want to get like a really big like plastic bag for your laptop because that's waterproof, you know, because that is one thing that I just didn't think about for some reason. But when you're walking around, you make sure your backpack is waterproof but looking for like a waterproof bag or like if you have like a like an old like gym drawstring bag if you want to bring that with you to keep your things dry i would absolutely recommend that you do that okay number three tote bag culture is rampant. Everybody has a canvas bag. It's very funny. Like I have, I've had a canvas bag for years. Like I would like take like to babysitting or like, you know, to the grocery store, like in Charleston, but like, they're like kind of trendy over there. Like people have like cute ones that they wear in the city. So that's definitely like a big essential, I would say, especially if you're like going grocery shopping or just like regular shopping, it's nice to just have like a little bag like that. I have one for like my laundry, which works out really well. The other tip I'm gonna give you, and I didn't, I don't know if I actually mentioned this in the video, but we're gonna get a little TMI. I brought so many like undergarments and like undershirts, under t-shirts, which came so much in handy because in my building, okay, are you ready for this? There's like 500, 600 people who live in my building. There are three washing machines. I did not live in a building that big my freshman year at College of Charleston, and we had at least eight washing machines, I think. And even then it was still always busy and it was free. So what I will say is like, you're not gonna wanna do laundry. Like you're just gonna go live your truth. I probably, I don't have to do laundry that often because I packed all of those like underneath essentials. And yeah, when you are traveling and you're going places, like the fact that like I, it's very hard for me to run out of underwear it comes, it's very useful. But that, that is my tip. That's truly my tip. Another thing, just like talking about like what people wear to class and things like that. So half of my classes last semester, pretty much all of my classes, my lectures were online, but then I had like some tutorials downtown. So I would kind of like get dressed up for class. What I will say, people dress up for class. In US school, like I would wear leggings and like a sweater to class. And like that was dressing up. I sometimes kind of felt weird. I'm like, oh my God, like I'm literally wearing a ball gown. And <laughs> in the UK, like like people do dress up more, um, I will say. So I will say if you are American or North American, like I actually don't know, I don't know what like the vibe is in Canada. Like, do you guys do athleisure? I feel like maybe, but I, I could be wrong because there's there's so many things that I learned about Canada this, sem this semester, it's really wild. Yeah, I will say like your athleisure, you know, live your truth and if that's what you like to wear, like there are some days where I just wear like a legging and like a big sweater to class. And I feel completely fine in that. However, like I would say people don't really, like I would not wear sweatpants to class. <laughs> you will be judged. So I would bring like more like real pants and things like that. Because that was one of like the biggest things that I was worried about when I was going there. But then I was like, oh, like maybe this is overkill, which this is gonna sound crazy if you're actually from Europe, but I was like four pairs of pants, like, Like, who am I, the queen? Like, just be comfortable. However, like, maybe leave some of the sweatpants and athleisure at home. Still bring it, like, to go to the gym and stuff, but that's not really the vibe. Yeah, so I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more content about, like, study abroad, like, vlogs, um, you know, what my experience is in Edinburgh, like, please give this video a like and subscribe because I post new videos every Friday. And yeah, leave any comments. If you have studied abroad and you have some tips, please leave them down below.